Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we're going to be looking at the kidney and its microscopic structures, which is going to include mostly the nephron, as well as the blood vessels and its associated structures. Alright, so first, before we take a look at that, let's look at the layers of the kidney. On the outside over here, this is the renal cortex, this kind of lighter layer on the outside, or the superficial layer. The deeper layer on the inside, that kind of looks like flower petals or cones or pyramids, this is the renal medulla. This will be helpful in identifying different parts of the nephron, so just keep that in mind when we're taking a look at its structures. So when you look at this whole kidney, you'll be able to see that there are these small little yellow balls as well as these little white tubes connected to them. This is going to be representing a nephron, which should be microscopic or very, very small. In fact, you have about 1 million nephrons in each of your kidneys, so this should be filled up with these little white tubes and little yellow balls. But it's hard to see what you have here in the, in the nephron, but let's take a look at a little bit of a bigger model so it's, it's a little more clear. So, in this model, you can see the yellow balls as well as red little tubes inside of it. This together is called the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle you're going to see throughout the kidney, but attached to each of the renal corpuscles, you'll see these little white tubes connected to them too. Let's go over all of these tubes really quickly so that we get an overview before we look at it with a little bit more depth. So first of all, the renal corpuscle, this outer portion of the renal corpuscle is the glomerular capsule. This inside of it is the glomerulus. Connected to it, this is the proximal convoluted tubule. You can see that it's kind of twisting. And then it goes down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, back up the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, and then back into the cortex in the distal convoluted tubule. That is going to lead to where a lot of these distal convoluted tubules join together at the collecting duct, and it will go down the medulla towards the papilla in order to release its contents as urine in the minor calyx down here. So that was one nephron, starting from the glomerulus all the way to where urine released at the collecting duct. So you're going to need to know those structures and be able to identify them, even though they're very similar in shape, size, and appearance. So let's take a look at what we can use to identify them, but also look at a few more details as well. So like we were saying, this as a whole is the renal corpuscle. But the outside, the yellow part, that is the glomerular capsule. And if you look over here, this outer portion, this is the, renal, the glomerular capsule as well. Inside of it, these red tubes are in fact these red tubes, which are small blood vessels or capillaries, which will help with filtering blood. So this inside and this inside is the glomerulus. From the glomerulus, you'll have these little holes that will allow like water as well as other solutes or salts as well as well, other, com other contents that are going to come out of the blood to be filtered and then released into the rest of the nephron. This is essentially where your urine is going to come from. But you're going to filter the blood where the contents will be received in the glomerular capsule and then it will go through the rest. But to continue on, there's also a few, couple more structures here, as in this kind of empty region here. This is called the glomerular space. So between the glomerulus and the glomerular capsule, this is the glomerular space. And then surrounding the glomerulus, this is the podocyte. So podocytes have these little, like, little feet like looking structures. That is going to help with filtering out the blood or filtering the blood, but also keeping large things inside of the blood vessels of the glomerulus. So red blood cells as well as proteins should still stay in the blood. Not everything is going to come out of your blood here. But podocytes, glomerular capsule, glomerulus, and glomerular space. So going back here, you can see that glomerular capsule is going to be connected to another tube. This first tube is called the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule is named because it is kind of well, complicated and twisting, being convoluted. 
but it is going to lead down into the medulla, specifically into this loop of Henle right here, this long U. And the long U, or the loop of Henle, is going to have two parts, and you need to say them specifically. From the proximal convoluted tubule, it will go down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, back up the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, until it reaches the cortex again, which is where you have the distal convoluted tubule. And then you'll have distal convoluted tubules from many nephrons connecting to this large tube in the middle, or many tubes in the middle really. This is called the collecting duct. And it will go down from the cortex, through the medulla, through the papilla, until it releases its contents into the minor calyx, where, it could, where it's then considered urine. So that is the nephron. You'll need to be able to identify those structures, but as you can see, a lot of them are very similar. Like if you weren't to be looking at the rest of the nephron, this would look very similar. You can use the other parts of the nephron to identify what is what. So first of all, regarding the convoluted tubules. You will want to look at what the convoluted tubule is specifically connected to. So in this case, this is the proximal convoluted tubule because you can look and see that it is connected to the glomerular capsule. It is proximal because it's closer to the glomerulus. This one instead is not connected to the glomerulus. If you follow both ends, you won't see it connected to the glomerulus. Instead, you see it connected to the collecting duct. That's how you know that this is the distal convoluted tubule. Similarly, you could look at the loop of Henle and see what it is connected to as well. So let's just start with this side. This one goes is this one goes up and you can see that it is connected to the distal convoluted tubule here because it is connected to the collecting duct. That means that this is the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. In a similar manner, if you follow this one up, you will see that this is connected to the proximal convoluted tubule because it is connected to the glomerulus. So make sure that you practice this on different nephrons because nephrons won't always look the same, but just as an example, what is this one? You could tell what it is because if you follow it to see what it's connected to, it is connected to this tube, which is then connected to the glomerulus, meaning that this is the proximal convoluted tubule, and this is the descending limb of the loop of Henle, meaning that the filtrate is going to go down this way in its pathway. So that is the nephron. Just be clear on what everything is and be able to identify them because it can be a bit confusing sometimes. But now that we know the structures of the nephron, we're going to look at some blood vessels as well as some associated structures as well. So if you look closely, you can see that the glomerulus is going to be connected to two different little red blood vessels. These two little red blood vessels are called arterioles. So one blood vessel or one arterial is bringing blood to the glomerulus. One blood vessel or arterial is bringing blood away from the glomerulus. And if we look a little bit more, or if we look at this bigger model over here, it's a little bit more clear. So here is our glomerulus, and we have our two arterioles. This arterial is larger. This arterial has a thicker wall. This is going to be the afferent arterial. This is going to be bringing blood to the glomerulus. It is going to have higher blood pressure, and it needs to be able to resist that a bit. So afferent, bringing blood to it, or approaching the glomerulus, thicker wall, bigger blood vessel. Now, even if you did not look at the afferent arterial, let's take a look at this blood vessel. This blood vessel on the other side, if we were to look at it, is small, and it has branches. This is an efferent arterial. This is taking blood away from the glomerulus. It has blood exiting the glomerulus. So small and branched, although sometimes you won't always see these branches, but this one is the efferent arterial. And just to associate it back to over here, if you look closely, you have this big red blood vessel here. This is one of the arteries of the kidney. And then this would be the afferent arterial. This would be the efferent arterial as it branches out to other blood vessels. Now surrounding the nephron, there are also capillary beds which will be surrounding them. So these will be specifically either surrounding the convoluted tubules or the loop of Henle. But also they're going to be in different regions of the kidney as well. So out here in the renal cortex, you have the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. 
those tubules are going to be surrounded by peritubular capillaries. So proximal and distal convoluted tubules surrounded by peritubular capillaries. So peri is like around, tubules is around the tubules, and peritubular is what we're going to be referring to. So these blood vessels or these capillary beds, those are peritubular capillaries. Down here in the medulla surrounding the loop of Henle, you can see that this, this ladder-like structure with these capillaries going across or straight across the loop of Henle, this is the vasa recta. So recta means straight, vasa is referring to the blood vessels. It is going to be going straight across the loop of Henle. So the loop of Henle in the medulla, vasa recta. So that was the nephron. Those are the blood vessels, but there are a few more specific structures that you need to learn. But before we talk about those, there's one more aspect of the like, organization of the nephron that you should be kind of aware of. So if you look closely, if you follow the nephron and look at the distal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule should always, or for the most part, come close back to its, to its glomerulus. So here's the distal convoluted tubule. You know that because it's connected to the collecting duct. It's close and adjacent to the glomerulus again. And you can see that here, here distal convoluted tubule, or connected to collecting duct, adjacent to its glomerulus. That is also shown here in a big glomerulus as well. So this is your glomerular capsule. This is your glomerulus. Now this tube is not like connected to the glomerulus, it is just adjacent to it. So this is just like this with the distal convoluted tubule coming back close to the glomerulus. So now that we've looked at that, let's take a look at some specific structures that, or specific cells that you should be aware of. Alrighty, so let's reorient ourselves really quickly. This big old ball this is the glomerular, glomerular capsule. Inside, you have the glomerulus, and then here is the afferent and, e afferent and efferent arterioles. So afferent being bigger, efferent being smaller. That means that this right here is the distal convoluted tubule. Now, between the afferent arteriole and the distal convoluted tubule, there is a region that contains two types of cells that you need to know. First of all, this region between here and here, like this right here, is the juxtaglomerular complex. So juxta as in right next to glomerular, juxtaglomerular complex. And it contains two types of cells. You have the juxtaglomerular cells, which is going to be surrounding the afferent, afferent arterial, as well as within the wall of the afferent arterial as well. And then in the distal convoluted tubule, remember this is very like specific because it comes back to be close to it. It's there because it's going to have certain types of cells, specifically the macula densa. So just to reiterate, you have the juxtaglomerular apparatus, the juxtaglomerular cells surrounding as well as within the afferent, afferent arterial, and then within the wall of the distal convoluted tubule, the macula densa. And that's about it for the microscopic structures of the, of the kidney. Thank you for listening. Good job, and I'll see you next time.